All right, hello and welcome to another sidebar video. Um, and this one is going to be a quick one. I'm going to talk about version control. Um, and we're going to get our coding a synthesizer in C code put into version control. Um, so what is version control? Uh, if I come to the project, um, here I've got synth, Let's just open the project, you know. Um, so it's basically sort of being able to store a history of all the things we've changed. Um, you know, if I, let me, okay, so text editors, um, they already kind of have version control and that's undo and redo, right? Or really like it remembers history. So if I come here and type, um, hello there, I can press control Z and that takes me back in time to how the text was earlier. And I can do control Y to go back to the future like that. Uh, pro tip is called control Y because the Y looks like a flux capacitor. Don't have to look that up, just take my word for that one. Um, but the problem is A, um, when we close the text editor, all that history is lost. And also if I were to go back in time um, to here and then now I type a different letter, all that future has been destroyed. I can't now redo back into the future. Um, there are some text editors that have kind of a, a weirder control why I can undo and redo scheme. Emacs is one of them. I always thought it was really confusing. Um, but yeah, so what a version control system does is it basically stores snapshots of your entire project across all your files in a project. Um, and you can sort of label those snapshots and go back to them and you get to see a history of everything that's been changed. But it also solves this problem of sort of going back in time and then as soon as you change history, um, instead of destroying the future, it will create like an alternate timeline. Like you know, It's called a branch basically. Um, let me come back to here. So we'll be using a thing called, um, the system we're gonna use is called Git. I don't know why it's called Git, because that is a insult in the UK. Um, so like I said, basically you've got your, um, you know, you've got your folder of full of files and you can store a snapshot in time and label it, right? You can label, say you're implementing a feature and we've, we've done the uh, for, fast Fourier transform, right? So that's now stored in time. And then we introduce a new feature, you know, all the files has changed um, and we can label that. Maybe we implemented an LFO, right? So now we can see history, but the cool thing is if we go back in time, you know, and we change, maybe we create a slightly different version of the Fourier transform, we don't lose, we don't lose this. Instead, we sort of branch off into an alternate timeline with different files that we can label that. And then at some point in the new branch, um, we can decide to merge these changes back in to the original timeline. And version control systems are usually pretty smart, especially with code, because it's all text-based. It's pretty smart at detecting, you know, what's what bits of the code have, have changed and what bits of the code have pretty much just stayed the same between the two branches. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna need to download git. Um, let's have a look at that. If you just Google git for Windows, uh, this is what the website looks like. And then you just come here and probably you, you want the 64-bit git for Windows setup. I've already got git installed in my machine. So, if I come now, uh, what I've done is I've taken all the projects we've done, including the stuff from our sidebar. So we've got a Fourier transform stuff here, and we've got our um, programming memory tutorial from the first sidebar in here, um, and then of course the synth. So when you install that, um, there are two options you can do. You can either open your command line, um, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna head over, so mine's in, um, Dev, what did I call it? Coding Simp series. Right. So, oh, let me change my 
screen there, right? So I've opened the command prompt, I've gone to the folder, and then to set up a new Git project, you just call git in it. And you say in initialized empty git repository. Uh, going in since it does create this hidden folder inside here called .git. So it doesn't show up by default in your Windows Explorer, but it is there. Like if I was to do dir, even when you do dir, actually it doesn't show up. I wonder if it shows up in um, full code. Yeah, so you can see here, it's created a folder called .git. Um, so you're not meant to edit anything in that folder. That's entirely handled by um, the version control software. So, um, now that we got that, what we need to do is we need to tell uh, the version control software to create a snapshot, our initial snapshot of all our files, but we don't want it to snapshot all the files. There are some files, especially in our synth, like this .pdb, which is our debug symbols, this .obj, which is like the intermediate build format. We don't want to do that. Usually you don't want to um, get it to take a snapshot of the Oh, that's interesting. Don't know why that's why. Um, e, uh, you know, executables, but in this case, they're really small, they're like a megabyte in size. So uh, we will do that. So to tell it to not take a snapshot of certain files, come back to our text editor, we're going to create a new file in the coding simp series folder called dot git ignore. And this. Um, it's just a, a text file that will that Git will look for and it will ignore different types. So like if we wanted to ignore those PDB files, you just do asterisk.pdb. So that means it, uh, we're, we're telling it to ignore all files that start with whatever. This is the wildcard symbol and end in a .pdb. Um, I also want to ignore any .obj files, .o files. Um, that's a about it, I can't think of anything else. Everything else we pretty much wanna keep. Oh, I don't want this um, .vs code. So I think we can do, is it .vs code? Or can we just literally tell it just to do that? Might have to do that. Let's have a look. So then if we come back to our command prompt uh, to add all the files, the command is git add and then dot. So we want to add recursively all the files in the current directory and all subdirectories. And you can see it's gone ahead and added all the files. We can call git status and that will tell us all the files it's added. And let's just quickly verify that's correct. Yep, we want the batch files, the uh, .c files, .h files. Um, cool. And now what we want, what we want to do is create. So this is um, this is like we've created a preparation for our snapshot. We're preparing for the snapshot, and now we want to actually um, label that snapshot and commit it. Um, so that's called git commit. So the command is git commit, and then you need to uh, give it a label or a message, and that's dash m for message. And we'll just say this is our um, first ever commit, All right? And there we go. So I'll show you how this works now. If we come and we, uh, let's say we go to our synth.c, right? And let's say we um, change the screen width, or maybe we shouldn't change the screen width. Maybe we change the screen height to like 368. You know, and we, we compile that. Simpsy 125. What's happened there? You notice now it's kind of gone a bit weird and all squished. So if we um, 
we, we could commit that pro so we could then say again we need to do um, git add and it'll automatically recognize what files have changed if we do git status now it notice we've changed the dot simple c and simple exe um, so we can commit that we'll say um, git commit um, you know break the synth So now if we wanted to go back in history, um, let's look how to do that. So you don't need to remember all these commands. Usually you just Google it, you know, like git um, rollback commit, right? This is what we want to learn how to do. So to roll back, you know, this is sort of the graph. Um, what we want is uh, the git reset command uh, the git revert command. So it looks like the command is um, git revert head. So you can see now it's saying revert, break the synth. This reverts commit. Every commit has this uh, GUID, a unique ID. So we'll just put in brackets here, this was when I was demonstrating reverts, right? And then um, to save this, it's um, control O to write it, and then control X, and now it's reverted. And if we come back to here, did that actually revert it? Let's close the editor, reopen it. Open the synth. And there you go. So you can see it's reverted. We changed it to 368 and now it's come back to 768. So now the next thing you want to do usually is um, store, store this project somewhere online. And the Usually the best place to do that is a place like GitHub. Um, let me bring up. So this is GitHub. You, you might have used, seen it before. Um, it's basically a, a website where you can link your Git repository um, with online. It's great for sort of open source projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a repository. I've got an account, so you probably want to set up your own account for this. Um, and then once you've set up an account, you'll be able to, you'll have a button where you can create a new repository. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, let's call it a coding a synth in C. Um, this is the repository for the coding a synth sizer in C series on YouTube and let me get the link to the playlist um, where is my playlists one second here we go I'll paste that link in um, so this is going to be a public repository. I'm not going to add any of this stuff because we've already added a git ignore. Let's create the repository. And so it will tell you um, how you can quickly syn synchronize this up to your own project. So we've already created our existing repository from the command line. So we just need to call these three lines. So again, I'm just going to paste this in and then copy this line, paste it in. And then finally, copy the last line, paste it in, and it's going to go ahead and push this to the GitHub repository. And if I just refresh this page now, you'll see everything is there. And if we come to, let me show you again, this button here where it says free commits with a little clock icon, 
you can see the first ever commit, we did the break the synth commit, and then we reverted, right? And you can click on these, and this is what's called a diff, a difference, and it will tell you nicely sort of what changed between each commit. And that's really the, the main benefit of something like a, a version control system. That's what version control systems give you. So we're going to start using this now um, instead of just me bunging all the code up on uh, my Dropbox. We'll start using GitHub from now on. And at the end of every episode, I'll create a commit and that will automatically get synced to GitHub. Cool, uh, that's it for this little sidebar video on Git. Um, again, if you want to learn more about that kind of stuff, you can get, um, they're called like a, a visual Git client. If you don't want to use the command line for whatever reason, you know, you've got things like uh, Git Tower, some are free, some are paid, Git Kraken is one of them. And it just gives you a more sort of, uh, you, uh, you know, GUI interface for doing Git commands. Uh, cool. Yeah, that's everything. So I'll see you probably the next episode I'll do will be back to the main coding assent in C series. So I'll see you then. Bye.